Hello and welcome to another episode of Industry Spotlight. In this series I have a look into a company or certain individual to see how they've impacted the industry and what they've achieved. In this episode I'm going to be looking at one of the most successful anime studios of all time, Gainax. Gainax have produced some of the most talented individuals in the industry and made some of the most successful anime movies and series. They have a very long and interesting history, so let's take a look. Before we look at how Gainax started, we need to look at the individuals who started it. Back in 1982, a small group of people started Daikon Films, a group that would be in charge of creating small animations for a convention to boost profit. This group was started by Hideaki Anno, Yoshiyuku Sedamoto, Hiroyuki Yamaga, Takami Akai, Toshio Okada, Yusuhiro Takada, and Shinji Higuchi. They first created Daikon Free, a short animation for the Daikon convention. These were made to sell at the convention so that the convention could make enough money to not go bankrupt. People were very impressed with how high quality the animation was for amateurs, so much so that Studio Nu got a whiff of the project and asked Hideyuki Anno and Hiroyuki Yamaga to work on Macross. This gave the group their only professional experience that would become very useful in the next few years. The team would then assemble to make Daikon 4. To create this, the team actually rented out studio space and tackled it with a much more professional manner. After the Daikon animations, the team wanted to take their skills to the next level, so they decided to pitch their studio idea to Bandai, a big company at the time. Through a connection they had at Bandai, their idea was forwarded to the head of Bandai. Luckily, the company were looking to grow the anime side of their business, so Gainax were given 800 million yen to work on the Royal Space Force movie. They were asked to make a pilot for the movie for Bandai before they created the full movie. So Gainax were now a professional, funded anime studio. The name Gainax wasn't meant to stay as their long-term company name, but because of their funding, they stuck with it. Gainax comes from the Japanese word Gaina, meaning big, with an X added to the end to sound cooler. The industry was at a point of big budgets and high quality projects, so the bar was very high for the newly founded studio, but Gainax were completely up to the job and completed the project in 1987. All the staff occupied various roles and the movie was received brilliantly by fans. The movie even made its way to the west. Bandai came to Gainax with a proposition. They wanted to fund a new project, but one that would be a success. They wanted Gainax to produce a show that would sell over 10,000 copies. So, in 1988, Gainax made Gunbuster. Shinji Higuchi was going to be the original director of the series, but due to him working on other projects, he couldn't commit. So, Hideaki Anno was brought in as a replacement. This would be his debut as a director, and it was released to good sales. A year later, Gainax would release one of their lesser-known projects, a daily TV series named Sakyo Komatsu's Anime Theatre. This was funded by Bandai but wasn't that successful. In 1990, Gainax would work on a new project, Nadia, The Secret of Blue Water. There were a lot of complications during the planning of this project, about who would direct it and who would produce it. Eventually, Anno was given the director spot and Gainax would produce it. The project was very expensive and put Gainax into a lot of debt, but it pushed the Gainax name into a more mainstream audience. Gainax would go through a few years of troubles with their debt and people leaving the company. Once they had cleared up some of these troubles, they started planning a new project. A project that Hideaki Anno would be directing. They planned the basics of the series and secured a TV spot. They decided to move into a new free story building for the production of this project. This project would be Neon Genesis Evangelion. Eva's early production was very shaky. No one wanted to buy a license for the merchandise and no one wanted to fund the manga. But the staff were confident Eva would be a success, especially Anno, who promised Eva would be a massive hit and he would be able to buy a new studio with the earnings. And the show did become a massive success and started selling brilliantly. Everything related to Eva was a guaranteed sell. They would also release two separate movies in 1997, Evangelion Death and Rebirth and End of Evangelion. Eva was making so much money, it was inevitable that something would go wrong. In 1998, disaster struck the company. Gainax were under investigation for tax fraud. So if you don't know what this is, everybody has to pay their taxes, and if you avoid these taxes and keep the money to yourself, you can get into a lot of trouble. Like I said, Evangelion was making a lot of money, so they could be in a lot of trouble. After a very long investigation, Gainax president Takeshi Sawamura was sent to jail and charged with accounting fraud. He had been saving all of Gainax's profit in cash without paying taxes. This was a big shock to the company and the staff. Most people had no idea of the financial situation. This was because prior to Ava, Gainax had only ever made enough money to keep running. They had never really dealt with a lot of money before, so it was just something that was never on their minds. The 2000s rolled around, and after a few sketchy years, the company were back into making anime again. Because of Gainax's dedicated and passionate team, the setbacks in the late 90s didn't affect them too much. 
and they continued to be one of the most active anime studios. In 2000, Gainax collaborated with Production IG to create the OVA Fully Cooly, or FLCL. It was made with the intention to stray away from the usual anime structures and create something unique. They even completely rewrote many of the jokes for the English version so people could understand them. It was positively received by fans and is usually referenced when talking about modern anime. In 2004, Gainax celebrated their 20th anniversary with the release of Die Buster, a sequel to the original 1988 Gunbuster OVA. In 2006, Hideki Anno left Gainax to found his own studio, Studio Kara. Anno was on a list of many of the original Gainax staff who have left to pursue other projects. One of Gainax's most successful recent projects was released in 2007 as Gurren Lagann. During the production of this series, another one of Gainax's original members left. Takami Akai left both the production of the show and left the company. Pantheon Stalking was released in 2010. It was another successful Gainax show that strayed away from the usual anime production techniques. In 2011, another studio was founded by ex-Gainax employees. Studio Trigger was founded by Hiroyuki Amaishi and Masahiko Otsuka. Though the staff of Gainax might have dramatically changed over the last decade, and it might not be the same company it was back in 1995, it's still a very active and unique studio with a lot of talented staff. Gainax are still producing shows every year and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. To think that this now massive company started as a group of fans attending conventions is quite remarkable and very inspiring. They made their passion into a career, and really played a massive part in pushing the anime industry forward. Eva is arguably one of the most influential and important anime series ever made, and it's all thanks to the hard-working staff at Gainax. If you want to learn more about the troubled production of Evangelion, you can watch my episode on Hideaki Anno, where I look at what happened during and after Eva, and why it was so controversial. But thanks for watching my video on Gainax. If you enjoyed, I would appreciate if you could click the like button or share the video around. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.